In this video, I'm going to talk about getting details about videos from the YouTube Data API using PHP. To do this, you're going to need a project set up in the Google Cloud Console, and you're also going to need a PHP package called the Google API PHP Client. Now, I cover the details for getting both of those things set up in the first video in this series called Initial Setup. You can find a link to that video in the description. And once you've gone through those details, you should have a project set up with some initial code where we just did a test to make sure that we could connect to the API. And now I just want to zoom in on that code and talk more specifically about the methods we're using with the API, how we can get back the data that we're looking for about videos. So let me switch over to my code editor where I've got this example set up. And I want to focus in on this code right here. This is where we're actually querying the API. We're using our service instance we are accessing videos and then we're invoking this list videos method. So to understand how this method works, let's go over to the documentation for the API. And on the left, you can see a list of resources we have access to uh, in this data API. And if you go down to videos, you'll see a list of methods related to videos. And the one we're using in this example is the list method. So with any of the methods, when you're looking through the documentation, you'll see a general description of what that method does at the top with some common use cases. And then if you scroll down to the request, you can learn about the parameters that that method is expecting. So in this case, the uh, first parameter, which is a required parameter for this method is called part, and it's expecting a string value. And you can see the options of the different strings we can pass it. Now in our case, we passed it the string snippet, and from the description, we could see that the snippet details is going to give us back things like the channel ID, the title, description, tags, and category ID. And we can see that reflected in our output. So switching over to the browser where I'm running my test code, you can see here's my response that I'm dumping to the page. I'm going to drill into this. I'm going to go into items, find the single video response we're getting back. And then at the very end, we can see there we have the snippet details, which we, uh, if we expand, we could see what's included there. Uh, and we're actually getting some more details than what was listed in the docs. For example, thumbnail information is included as part of your snippet details as well. Uh, now, if you want to request multiple parts, let's say you wanted to get not just the snippet, but also your statistics for that video, uh, you would just include that as a comma separated value. And just to show that, I'll update my code. So we'll say snippet comma statistics. Let's go refresh our results. All right, so now we've got two bits of data back and you can see what's included in the statistic data. Moving on from the part parameter, the next parameter it wants is some sort of filter where we're gonna indicate what video or videos we're gonna be getting back. In our case, we filtered by ID. We gave it the single ID for a single video we wanted back. Uh, if we wanted to get multiple videos, we could separate those IDs by commas. Uh, or we could do a more broad filter. For example, you could filter by chart. You could specify things like most popular, and it would give you the most popular videos in a particular region. Uh, you could also filter by rating. Let's say you wanted to get a list of all the videos that you've liked. Uh, that is an option with your filters. Now, the rating filter does require an OAuth connection with the YouTube API, which is something we'll be talking about in an upcoming video. Uh, not something we could do right now. It's just an API key, but we could put a pin in that. Like I said, we could do that uh, eventually. Moving on past filters is a series of optional parameters that you could specify that are going to influence the response you're going to get back. Uh, you could skim through these to learn about all the optional parameters, but just as an example, let's play around with one. Um, let's play around with the max results. Uh, so by default, the max amount of videos you'll get back from a query is five. Uh, if we wanted to up this, we could uh, uh, specify the max results, and you could see that the max we can specify is 50. Uh, so let's see this in action. I'm going to update this, and where I'm going to put any of my optional parameters, I'm just going to tack it onto this array uh, that I started with my filters. So we'll just add max results there, and we'll set it to the max of 50. Um, now, I'm also going to alter the query because right now we're only searching for a video by a single ID. So that's only ever going to yield one video anyway. So let's broaden this a little bit. Let's switch our filter over to chart and we'll filter by most popular videos. All right, so the result now should be uh, 50 videos coming back as part of this response. And there we go. We've got 50 items. Uh, each item is an instance of a video. And then if we go into that video, we can see our details for snippets uh, or statistics. 
All right, so uh, the key takeaway here is just how to specify these optional parameters, tacking them onto this array that goes as the second argument to your list videos method. So understanding all that, I'm just gonna revert my example back to the original. And then uh, coming back to the documentation, I think everything else here is pretty self-explanatory. If you look through these other parameters, it'll tell you uh, how it's gonna affect your query uh, and what options you have when it comes to setting those parameters. All right, so let's move on now to the response that you're gonna get back. And there is a section in the documentation for this. So I'm gonna jump down to that. And here's a breakdown of the data we get back. Uh, the first thing to understand is that we're gonna get this video list response. And that checks out if we look at our example where we had output the response, you can see it's an instance of this video list response. Uh, we're gonna get an E tag, which is short for entity tag. This is uh, effectively a unique identifier for the content we're getting back. And this could be used for caching purposes. If you're building an application that's gonna be making a lot of queries against the YouTube API, uh, there might be instances where you want to cache some of the responses you're getting back uh, in your database to reduce the amount of queries you have to make to the API. And by storing and utilizing this e-tag information, you could see when your responses need to be updated. In other words, when you need to get a fresh copy from the uh, API. So not something you'll need for general usage, but if you are building an application that is really gonna be heavily using the YouTube API, I would definitely uh, look into taking advantage of that. The next bit of data you're gonna get back in the response relates to page information. Uh, and this is gonna come into play when you're running queries that are yielding multiple results. Let's say you run a query to get all the videos for a given channel. Uh, you're only ever gonna get 50 results at a time. And so the page info is there so that you can run subsequent queries to get additional videos. Uh, this is something I'll cover in more detail in the next video when we look at running queries that get multiple videos back. So we can put a pin in this for now. Now, the most important thing you're going to get back in your response is the actual items themselves. This is going to be an array of data where you're going to have these video resources and each video resource is going to represent a single video. And once again, we see this in our example. So here's our overall video list response. Within there, we have our items. And then we have an array of these video responses where each one represents a single video. And in this case, uh, because we were searching by a specific ID, we only got a single video back. So now that we understand this overall structure of the response, let's fine tune our code a little bit. So rather than just dumping the entire response, we can uh, essentially zoom in a little bit um, on our video data and, and replicate the kind of thing you would actually do in an application. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this response is I wanna zoom in on the specific video we're getting back. So let's create a variable called video. And from our response, we wanna reference that items property. And in this case, we're only expecting a single item back because we are filtering by a single video ID. So I'm gonna say items at zero, and then we're gonna drill down one step further within that item to the snippet details. And let's see what that gets us. So I'll just dump that to the page. And there we go, we've got our basic snippet information, title, description, thumbnails, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you can imagine how you would use this if you were trying to output information about this video on say your website. Let's go back to our uh, code here and let's, uh, let's imagine we were actually working in like an HTML view. So I'm gonna close PHP and let's echo out the title. Use a little PHP island to do this. So we're gonna say video title. We'll follow that with the description. And let's also throw the thumbnail in there. So looking back at our data, there's a thumbnails property. And then within there, we have a few different re uh, resolutions to choose from. So let's get the uh, medium resolution. And it looks like we're gonna be looking for the URL property within there. So it's gonna be thumbnails, medium URL. I'll throw this up top with an image tag. Let's see what that looks like. All right, perfect. So there's all our data. It's not pretty, but it's there. There's our thumbnail. Here is our title. And then here is the description that follows it. So that's the basics of working with the list videos method. Uh, and also just a general introduction to working with the YouTube API docs. All the other resources and methods follow a very similar pattern in terms of explaining how the method works, what parameters are expected, and the type of response you can get back. Um, the other useful thing while we're looking at the documentation, you'll notice that each of the methods has this try it widget. And if you open this up, you can play around with the different parameters. Uh, so for example, just to replicate the search we've been doing in our code, we could indicate that the part we want is snippet. 
And then in our case, we were looking for a specific video ID. So let me go back to my code and grab what that ID was. All right, and then down at the bottom, we could execute it. Um, I'm not gonna do Google OAuth because I'm just doing a read request here. I don't need to do that. Like I've mentioned before, we'll be talking about OAuth in upcoming videos. We're just gonna authenticate with our API key. So I'm gonna say execute. All right, and there's the response that we get back, which uh, should match up everything we were seeing in the browser. Of course, we're just seeing it in this JSON object format. So that could be a useful uh, utility as you're building your methods and trying to get back certain data. You can basically do a dry run test of it uh, in this little widget before you have to write the code for it. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up this example. In the next video, we're gonna look at some queries that are gonna get us multiple videos back. For example, we'll look at getting all the videos back for a given channel. We'll also look at like doing general searches for videos. And we'll talk about how to handle the responses uh, because you are gonna be getting only a set uh, amount of videos back at a time and you're gonna have to do multiple subsequent queries to essentially page through the responses that you're getting. So we'll look at all of that and uh, see what else we could do with this YouTube data API.